What's going on folks? Welcome back. Got another video for you guys today. Today is something that I've been wanting to talk to you guys about for a minute, but I wanted to put time in on the product myself before I gave my opinion on it. So you guys have all heard of LiveScope by now, obviously, but last year Garmin came out with the new and improved version of that and it's called LiveScope Plus and they have a new transducer called an LVS 34. And so Previously, there was the 32, which was awesome, the, the live scope transducer. But when I tell you guys that Garmin knocked it out of the park with this new live scope plus, it is absolutely phenomenal. So I want to show you guys today a little bit of how I use it, but more importantly, for my new people to live scope, just like my previous video, I want to make it more informative. I want to show you guys how I set it up, how I set my settings up, and how I fish it. So that's what today's video is going to be about. Let's jump into it. We're going to show, show you guys exactly how I set my unit up. All right, guys, let's dig into the unit. So the first thing I'm going to do, I'm going to hit menu. And then sonar setup is what I'm looking for here on my menu. So let's go sonar setup. And then we're going to go through each one of these. OK, so we're going to start with appearance. Under appearance, you got color scheme, color gain, color limit, trails and bottom fill. OK. I always play around with my different color schemes, but right now I got it on flood light. That's what I've been filling here recently. So I wanna come down here and show you guys where that's at. Uh, there it is, flood light right here. Boom, we're gonna select that and go back. All right, and then we're gonna go into color gain. Color gain is very important. I like my color gain to be high. Of course, that's something you're gonna to wanna to play with, but I would say run the color gain a minimal on 80%, which is what I have it right here, but I'm gonna bump it up just a little bit to 90%. Then I'm gonna go done. Then we have to go back into menu, then sonar setup again. All right, then we're gonna go into our layout. Layout, you got the grid overlay, scroll history, on-screen control, reverse range, compress range. The only thing I like to play with here on this menu is the grid overlay. I cannot stand having a grid on my unit, but some guys really love that. So that's, again, something you wanna play with. I'm gonna turn mine's off really quick, just like that. All right, we're gonna back up. Noise reject, <clears throat> off, low, medium, high. I usually keep my noise reject on medium. Okay, select that there, go back. TVG, I got off. Ghost reject is on auto, but you can, you can turn that off too, um, just for clarity of the unit. So I'll hit off there, I'll go back. Overlay data and installation, that doesn't apply to setting up uh, anything that we're doing today. So pretty much, that's what we have. Now, I wanna go back and on the front screen, I wanna show you guys something. So you have how far out your unit reads and then you have your gain. Obviously your gain is your sensitivity, very, very important. I like to start off somewhere between 65 and 70 and I'll turn that thing up to where it's really, really hot. And what I mean by that is you'll start seeing all the clutter in the screen. And as I put my deucer in the water, I'll back this down until the unit gets just crystal clear like I want it. All right, <clears throat> now, what I've done differently since I've been playing with LiveScope over the years is I found that selecting a depth that's appropriate for the depth you're fishing is far better than running the unit on auto in terms of how deep it's reading. So right here, this is how you adjust the feet, like the feet of how deep the deucer's reading, okay? So if I'm fishing in 10 foot of water, I don't want this thing on 30 foot or I don't want it on auto because it's constantly adjusting itself. But I found that if I can lock that in at 15 feet and I'm in 10 foot of water, my unit is very crisp. My image, my returns are very, very crispy. And so that's what I like to do. Make sure you lock in the depth that's appropriate to what you're fishing. And I think that pretty much summarizes the whole gamut. Let's go drop her in the water and see what we can see. All right, guys, so right now you can see I got a few fish out there suspended about 35 foot out. <clears throat> and let's see, is that a fish? Yeah, no. Uh, well, that's one right there swimming right underneath the boat, almost to us in 10 foot of water right there. But you can just see how crystal clear that is. And I'm looking out 80 foot on this unit. Yeah, there's three of them right there underneath the boat. Um, I'm looking out 80 foot right now. Look at that. There's some bait. Look, there's some bait. All right, so I'm gonna adjust. See, I got it on 15 foot, but we're pretty shallow. 
So I'm gonna adjust that to 10 foot. Now see how that gives you more screen to look at? I like that personally. You may not. Let's see if we can pick up our bait out here. Throw out a fish and, all right, so there's, there's some fish out there. Right there, let's see. There's our jerk bait. Coming right to that fish right there. He's rising up. Is he thinking about it? I don't think so. But we got some more fish out there at about 70. Let's see what they might think. Right through that bait right there. A lot of bait out here. So as you can see guys out here, there's just fish floating all over the place. And in previous years, you could never target these bass, man. Out floating, just kind of suspended over nothing a lot of times. But now with this forward facing sonar, man, it's it's really become a tool that we utilize a lot. Um, and, and, we, and we catch a lot of fish on it. So, you know, just giving you some, some insight on it. Um, something you might want to try. Oh, I've got one behind it. Oh. Oh. That sucker. All right, guys, so let's talk about baits that are really good to pair with live scope. As you can see right now, I'm using a jerk bait and that thing is showing up really good on this unit. Um, but other baits that I have found that also are, are really effective are drop shot. Um, oh, I got one looking at me. What are these? Bite it. There's three of them running under the boat. But anyways, drop shot's really good uh, because that tungsten weight or that big lead weight that you'll use to, to put that out there gives off a good return. So you can see that really, really good on these units. So those are probably my number one and two, but a spinner bait, of course, the Alabama rig, it's, it's huge. That's gonna show up great. Um, <clears throat> these are all just great. Great base. A jig, a heavier jig is another one that's pretty good. Just something that's going to give you a good return. We scaring them this morning. All right, guys, one thing that I want to say, too, when you get your unit set up, you know, I'm on this lake right here that's doesn't have anything hard like a dock or a bridge piling or something like that. It's just a, pretty much a grass lake. But when you get your unit set up, make sure you go test it out on something hard like a dock post or a bridge piling, something that's not going to move, right? Something that you can get dialed in on your panning, right? So as you're searching for this structure, these fish, you're constantly turning your trolling motor head, find something that's stationary so then you can lock it in. You can see exactly how you're trolling motor is pointing at that and it really helps you dial in the cast to where you can see your bait and where you can see the fish and all and all the magic happens so i hope you learned something from this quick simple video on, on garmin live scope this is a tool man that we use all day every day regardless of the fishery um, it's worked really well for me over the years and uh, i know it's going to get only better 
So I'm trying to stay on top of my game as well as help you out. So make sure you guys drop me a comment, like, subscribe, all the goodies. I appreciate you. I'm going to make a few more casts.